Hello all, this is James Johnson, aka Sulphur Blade, and I am here in a game known as Fishing Planet. And in this video I tend to... Well, I don't tend. In this video I want to bring you an informational style video. And the topic of this video is going to be the very first lake you start in, and that is Lone Star. Uh, this is a lake in Texas, and I'm basically going to show you the very basics on how to get started in Lone Star. Um, bear with me. I need to grab caffeine. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. I, I thought I was ready. Uh, I had a glass of ice sitting in front of me, but no soda to pour into the glass of ice, so I had to grab a soda. So, as I was saying, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on Lone Star. Now, in Fishing Planet now, there's these missions and things of that nature. One of the missions, or uh, there's a couple of exploration missions for Lone Star. There's there's like two levels of them. The first one is basically pan fishing and the second level is catching the larger fish beyond the pan fish. And mainly I'm gonna be going in in this video on how to catch the larger fish with the exception of one of the pan fish and that's the the red ear sunfish because the red ear son of fish, if you don't know where to look for it, can be a little bit difficult to catch. And also if you're not using the proper bait. Um, but the other sunfish are pretty easy. Uh, you'll just catch them as you're trying to catch the other ones. Where the, the red ear sunfish, he tends to hang out in the deep with the catfish and the and the buffalo, the, the smallmouth buffalo. Anyway, um, if you look and see where I'm at, I'm going to bring up the map here for you. Oh, that's the lake map, but okay, this, this still works. Um, if you look at the lake map here, they've, they've, they've added this, which is basically a topographical uh, lake map, which shows you where the deeper holes are. There's this deep hole that sits out here. That is the place that we're going to be fishing. That's the place we're going to be trying to put our line into. It's quite deep there, and so we're going to have a fairly uh, uh, large amount of depth set underneath the bobber uh, to take advantage of that because catfish and smallmouth buffalo, which is a carp, they're both bottom feeders and so you're going to want your bait to be as close to the bottom as you can possibly get it. <clears throat> now I'm going to show you that I currently have uh, semolina balls on the hook and I'm using a uh, number two hook. Uh, when you start, I think you start off with a number six hook, and you can use a number six hook. Uh, there is no, there is not that big of a difference between a number two and a number six. Um, I just happen to be using a number two because it helps to land slightly bigger fish with bigger hooks, um, and it also helps you to keep the smaller fish off of the hook because the hook is too big for it. Uh, but when you're starting out, you're going to have the number six hook, and that's fine. It, it'll work fine because most of the smaller annoying fish aren't going to be down at that depth to bother you anyway. As you can see, I have the depth below the bo bobber set to 81. Now this is inches. Please keep that in mind that I'm an American. So this is 81 inches below the bobber. Um, 
do do the math, figure out what it is for metric, and set it appropriately. Um, but if if you're an American and you're watching this, it's 81. All right, the next trick that a lot of people who are new players don't understand when they're playing is how to cast your float setup out farther than so when you, when you start off uh, you're gonna have your float set up something like this right and when you cast it's gonna end up going like that and you can't get it any farther than that no matter what you try to do well there is a button and that important button to know is F11. So F11 will change uh, your float rod into a rod that's capable of being casted. Just like that. Now once you're in F11, you're going to right click on the mouse in order to aim. And you get this aiming circle that pops up. Just place it out there uh, as far as you can throw it. I'm going to probably be able to get out to about 69 to 70 feet. Um, you may not be able to get as far, but if you can get to at least 50 feet, this will work because the hole is pretty much between 50 and 70 feet from where I am standing right now. Whoops. All right, so we're out there. Um, 65 is a little short on the cast, but that's fine. 65 is, is well in the target zone of where we need to be. And you can see the bobber is starting to wiggle already. And we've got a fish on. Thank you, Mr. Fish, for making this video nice and smooth. And there he is, the smallmouth buffalo. This is probably the hardest fish to catch on this map um, and that's how you do it you use the semolina balls on well your number six hook will work just fine that you start off with I'm using a number two hook and you cast straight out there like I just showed you uh, with the leader set to 81 inches deep and that's all there is to it now if you want to catch catfish you do practically the exact same thing we just did and in fact, we're, I'm going to demonstrate catching a catfish. The only difference here is we're going to change our bait from semolina balls to pet food. There we've got pet food here. And we're going to cast to the exact same spot. Now the annoying thing about using pet food and fishing for catfish is that if you're wanting to catch a catfish, sometimes the smallmouth buffalo will uh, take the pet food. And sometimes that other panfish I was telling you about that can be difficult to find, the Redeer sunfish, will also hit the pet food. Alright, so that was a little bit better cast, and right away... Fish on! But it's not a very strong fish. In fact, I think it's going to be one of those Redeer sunfish I was telling you about. Yes, it was. Okay, so that's how you catch the Redeer sunfish, is by basically trying to catch catfish. So uh, do the same thing you would do to catch catfish, and you can catch Redeer sunfish very often. Um, if you want to just catch Redeer sunfish, you don't want to catch the catfish, Simply adjust your leader from 
uh, or your your depth below the bobber from what I currently have it set at 81. Move it up to about 50, 55 ish inches, and you will get primarily the red deer sunfish without catching any of the catfish. But we're going to cast out there again because I need to prove to you that this method will work to catch catfish. All right, 65 feet that time. Will we have the same luck that we had with the last two casts? No. So sometimes the fish don't bite instantly, uh, especially if you're fishing for the catfish and the, the deeper water uh, bottom feeders. When you're fishing with a bobber, uh, they can sometimes take a little while. I did see that bobber jiggle, so maybe it won't be as long as it could be. Let's keep our fingers crossed. So after we catch the catfish, then I'm going to take you to see uh, basically how to catch spotted bass and how to catch grass, the grass pickerel. Uh-oh, not much fight. It's going to be a damn sunfish again, isn't it? No, it is a channel catfish. So there we have it. We just pulled out a catfish, the Redeer sunfish, and the uh, smallmouth buffalo on the seminilla balls, not on the pet food. So the catfish and the sunfish were both in the pet food, as they should be. Now in this next part we're going to we're going to hang up the float rod that we're using now and we're going to pull out our trusty casting rod. Now in the beginning you may or may not have a casting rod. Uh but this is something that you're going to want to invest in getting. I'm running down the the beach here get over to uh, actually I should show you before I leave this spot that you can actually catch spotted bass here in this very same spot we're catching the catfish and the smallmouth buffalo so if you just simply cast straight across the way like about so Let your lure go all the way down to the bottom of this hole. And then start doing a retrieve.
So this probably isn't the best lure now that I'm thinking about it. There are some better lures for what we're doing here. So I'm going to blame that uh, cast without a fish on the fact that I cast it out without making sure I had the proper lure in place. So let's go ahead and swap out this spoon for... for a nano spoon. Um, right now it's kind of a darkish day. So I'm thinking I'm going to go with the purple and black instead of the green and black. If it's a brighter day, I'd probably use the, the green and black. So remember the, the golden rule. Dark days, dark baits. Bright day, bright baits. So that's how you want to decide your color choices. Alright, these nano spoons are really good for these spotted bass. So I better get a fish on, or I'm going to look stupid. And again, let it sink all the way down to the bottom. So I tend to do a stop-go retrieval. Um, you can also do a, a lift drop, and that's that's pretty effective because it's in a deep hole. Oh, I think I missed a bite. Damn it. All right, so no luck on that cast. Um, we're not going to spend too much time here in this spot because I want to show you where to the best spots for the smallmouth, or not the smallmouth, the spotted bass and the, the pickerel are. Uh, but I do. I'm going to give this one more shot with this uh, daredevil type casting spoon, the red and white. Um, it's another very good bait for spotted bass. Um, so this casting spoon and these nano spoons um, I like for spotted bass. And we're going to do the exact same thing we just did with the last two lures. Hopefully get better results.
I also haven't even checked um, the fish activity chart. And this might be a low fish activity time period right now. Any excuse I can make for having three casts in a row in this location go awry. But I promise you, spotted bass can be caught here. Um, but I'm not going to put any more effort in in this location because I want to keep this video short-ish. Shorter than most of my videos anyway. And we'll move on to the other more important locations to show you. Alright, catching spotted bass in this location was a bust, but we we did show the catfish, the uh, smallmouth buffalo, and the, the ray deer sunfish how to catch them without much of an issue. So let's go on down the shoreline again and get over to that wooden bridge. All right, so catching the grass pickerel can be a bit of a pain. And the reason for it is the grass pickerel hangs out in the same locations that the, that the spotted bass does. And they like the same lures. Um, this casting spoon, which is a daredevil, which is really good for pike, um, just happens to be really good for spotted bass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap this out. Uh, for the the uh, this guy here, the golden casting spoon. I found that uh, I get a little bit better results getting the pickerel more often than the bass with this uh, lure than the red boy one. Alright, so one of the pickerel spots, there's three spots here in which you could pull pickerel out of this location. One is right in here in this hole. And so that's the first place I'm going to try. And again, let the lure go all the way to the bottom, and then do a stop-go retrieve. And bang, fish on. Uh, though it's jumping around a bit like a spotted bass, which was to be expected. Um, you're going to catch a lot of spotted bass in the pickerel spots and vice versa. Um, this is the area where you want to go for spotted bass. There's the, the spotted bass just bite off the hook down here in this location. Alright, spot number two for possibilities of catching a pickerel is way back here in the back here. Let it drop all the way down to the bottom. And you guessed it, do a stop-go retrieval. Uh, you'll get uh, snagged up in lily pads every now and then, though, because uh, there's a lot of pads in this area.
right, now I'm just going to come at this uh, from another angle. I'm going to come down here to this side of the bridge, and then I'm going to spot this hole over here. So, kind of like cast, casting an X over the second leg of the X over the first leg of the X. So those these two spots here are good possibilities of getting uh, the grassy pickerel. Again, let it drop to the bottom. So there's a bit of uh, uh, vegetation down there in that location that you get hung up on pretty frequently. All right, so then just rinse and repeat. If at first you don't succeed, That's a fish, I think. It's moving. Oh, it's I hooked uh I had one of those They have weeds in the game now that you could actually hook. Oh, that was a snag. See what time is it in the Yeah, we were down in a we're coming up to peak fishing here in the next hour. But we were just coming through the, the lull, if you will.
angle a little bit here, see if I can get a little deeper behind those pads. Do we have a fish on? Um, spotted bass, I think. Yeah, sometimes catching that pickerel can be a little bit of an issue. But in the meantime, you catch spotted bass, which are good money, so why not? over here. Got hung up on some vegetation there. Right. If you get really desperate, you can uh, can try to be a little more explorative. Sneak on back here. Though this is not something I normally do, but it is possible to catch a pickerel this way. Problem with this spot is there's not a lot of room.
So if I was using a different spoon right now, I would be tearing up the spotted bass. Because these, all of these spots we're throwing into are great for spotted bass. But we're attempting to limit the spotted bass we're catching in exchange for uh, getting the pickerel more likely. And uh, that's not working out so far. Was this some sort of game glitch? I can't walk through here. I didn't have my reel on the lap. Okay. Alright, this might be the picker over... No, I don't know. Spot of bass. Alright, I'll give it three more casts, and if we don't get the pickerel, then I'm just going to say, these are the locations that you can catch a pickerel, and, well, it might not be instantaneous. But, you can catch, catch uh, plenty of bass here. And the final cast. The 
this would be the one. All right, so those are the locations I would go for Pickerel, if I were you. And hopefully, you'll have far better luck than I've had right now trying to show you. Now, um, if you're wanting to go for Spotted Bass... Simply press the right buttons on your keyboard. Bring up your inventory. And again, you can either go to the nano spoons or this uh, red and white casting spoon. I'm going to put on the red and white casting spoon because I just have a feeling it's going to catch me up. Uh, it's going to catch me the uh, pickerel and make me look silly. So in real life, we call this lure a daredevil, and uh, it it slays northern pike. It's like there's there's no better lure in real life for northern pike than a daredevil. Alright, so now the location doesn't even want to be cooperative for bass. That's what happens when you do a video. I had a strike there and I missed it.
There we go. Fish on. And another spotted bass. So, that uh, pretty much covers the episode. I've shown you where to go for pickerel, though the pickerel didn't show themselves to you in the video. Those are the best locations to catch them. Um, I've shown you catfish. I've shown you the smallmouth buffalo. I've shown you where to find the elusive Radier sunfish. And we've caught lots of spotted bass. Um, yeah, that pretty much covers this uh, wonderful location known as the Lone Star Lake. And hopefully uh, this video having been fairly up-to-date will help you out if you're looking for a resource to discover how do I catch that smallmouth buffalo or how do I catch that catfish or how do I accomplish this mission at Lone Star um, there's lots of videos out there but sadly some of them are outdated um, as this game has gone through many different iterations of development since it was released um, there used to be a lot of different tactics, uh, especially to catch some of these fish, like the smallmouth buffalo, when, uh, when you first used to fish for it back in the day, I remember using, it was either peas or corn, and peas or corn was a bait that was available to very beginners, and now those baits are much farther down the line in the level cap, and you don't have access to them. So they've done a lot of tweaks like that. A lot of live baits are no longer accessible to newer players that used to be, and various different rebalancing changes. Um, the smallmouth buffalo used to not bite on a lot of things and used to bite on some things, like dough balls, for instance. Uh, the smallmouth buffalo used to go after quite a bit, and now... Uh, they hardly go after them. They, they prefer to go after the salmonella balls instead. So, you know, it, it's just various changes that have been made to the game. Um, but for the most part, if you look at some of those old videos, uh, a lot of the locations I'm using are still going to be the same locations that you have today. It's just today you're using maybe different depths or different lures. Um, so th those are the main changes that have happened since some of those outdated videos. But anyway, I'm James Johnson, a.k.a. Sulphurblade. Hopefully you enjoy my content. If so, please leave a like and subscribe. And until next time, all, peace.